Trump's administration in formation. The most serious outcries surround Donald Trump's selection of Steve Bannon to be his chief strategist and senior counselor, making Mr. Bannon virtually the most influential, if not the most powerful person in the Trump administration. Donald Trump also named former GOP chairman Reince Priebus to be his White House chief of staff, which is an important gatekeeper position, which comes also with a great deal of power. But Steve Bannon will be a policy general, along the lines of a Karl Rove for George Bush or David Axelrod for Barack Obama. There are those among the American Jewish leadership who have erupted in anger over Donald Trump's appointment of Bannon. Mr. Bannon is known to be one of the founders of what's now called the alt-right movement, which is depicted as a vast right-wing conspiracy with policies that are racist, bigoted, anti-women, anti-gay, and anti-Semitic. Jonathan Greenblatt, national director of the ADL, and Rabbi Jonah Dove Penzer, director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, are two of the strongest voices condemning the Bannon appointment. The Religious Action Center's statement regarding the appointment reads in part, both in his roles as editor of the Breitbart website and as a strategist in the Trump campaign, Mr. Bannon was responsible for the advancement of ideologies antithetical to our nation, including anti-Semitism, misogyny, racism, and Islamophobia. There should be no place for such views in the White House. And other Jewish leaders are also criticizing President-elect Trump for not coming out publicly condemning white supremacists, including David Duke and the KKK, for their hideously anti-Semitic tweets and emails and rhetoric. For example, Jewish actress Emmy Rosam received this tweet, a picture of the gates of Auschwitz with the name of Trump on the gates, as the name Trump appears on so many of Trump buildings. And the tweet reads, This is in all of your ilk's future. You will all be seeing a train shortly. Hollywood days of subjugation is over. And then in large capital letters, Sieg Heil. Many Jews, many of you who watch JBS, are in touch with me expressing serious concern, even fear, that Donald Trump is creating an atmosphere where virulent anti-Semitism and virulent bigotry can erupt into the open. Well, what do those who support Donald Trump, especially Jews who support Trump, feel about his appointment of Steve Bannon and of what the blatant anti-Semitism means that seems to be coming more and more out in the open. For some answers, I'm so pleased to have on our JBS phones from Philadelphia, Lori Lowenthal Marcus, co-chairs of JewsChooseTrump.org, an organization that published a response praising the selection of Steve Bannon as chief strategist. And Lori, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, Lori, you've seen it all. Before we go into specifics, you know, what's your general response to the criticism that Donald Trump has received for his appointment of Steve Bannon and, again, for uh, the, uh, the critics who are hurling epithets at him for being, if not anti-Semitic himself, being someone who facilitates, in some way condones anti-Semitism. Mark, I'm so glad that you asked me to be on this show because I actually spent all day yesterday reading everything possible about Steve Bannon because of these concerns and wrote a very long article last night about Steve Bannon and the claims of anti-Semitism against him. And I have to say, first and foremost, I really hope that you will not continue to join with the certain members of the Jewish establishment and attacking Steve Bannon as an anti-Semite because there is zero basis for that, absolutely 
zero. In fact, every person with whom I spoke who has worked closely with or had extensive conversations with Steve Bannon, both about Jewish issues, but especially about the Jewish state, say unequivocally, Steve Bannon is a strong supporter of Israel. He is a Zionist. There is not an anti-Semitic bone in his body. Uh, having Steve Bannon in the White House is having the greatest possible friend there that the Jewish people could have. So the hysteria uh, um, promoted throughout the Internet by uh, people who oppose Trump and finally have to realize that they lost, Trump won, have now shifted the, the venom towards Steve Bannon. And to say that he is the leader of the alt-right is just frankly insane. It's an insane <laughs> comment to make. Uh, I know that you're just quoting others, but um, Breitbart, and I spent hours of going through hundreds of articles uh, on Breitbart yesterday. It's not a site that I normally go to, but I spent hours, and there was not a single article that had any anti-Semitism in it whatsoever. And in fact, there were dozens of very positive, supportive articles about Israel, ones that I could write myself, and I am a ardently, staunchly pro-Zionist individual. So let's please put aside the rhetoric and the flames that are being thrown at this man, and let's look at why people are making these accusations and really what the motivation is for trying to get Jews at this point, even after the election, to fear Donald Trump. It, you know, I have to say, as a fairly public pro-Israel person, I've received maybe two dozen emails and messages in, my, in the last couple of years with Nazi implications and disgusting anti-Semitic comments. And I never blamed it on the fact that Barack Obama was president. I mean, come on, that's just, it's just unfair and unfounded. Um, you know, really, Black Lives Matter turns out to be a very anti-Israel organization, which has accused the Jewish state of being an apartheid state and committing genocide. Now, the Democratic Party platform endorsed Black Lives Matter. Are people uh, in the Trump campaign or people who support Trump who are Jewish saying, you know, then therefore the Democrats are horrible anti-Semites and racists and we should all fear if a Democrat is elected? You know, let's get a hold of ourselves. Okay, but we have said many things and I think they're important. I want to correct something to begin with. Please. I have neither joined in nor am I saying in any way that I personally think Steve Bannon is an anti-Semite or is with the alt-right. You are correct by saying I quoted what is being right. said about him. And I want you to understand that, uh, Lori, I have tried very hard here on JBS not to take a stand when I do a program like this. My job is to give someone like you an opportunity to respond to the criticisms or whatever is being said in the public. And I thought it was very important, and I was very pleased that you said yes, you do this interview. Oh, because I, I'm not, look, I'm okay, I just, I just, to reach a, a broad I audience. just want to make sure, I want to make sure you understand. I am going to ask you as tough questions as I can. Please. They do not in any way suggest that I believe anything about Steve Bannon one way or the other. And that is what JBS has done, and I'm very proud of it. I am telling you at the moment, and I will give you examples of what is being said, and then you respond. Okay. For example, um, you say you did not see find one thing in Breitbart that had an anti-Semitic tinge. If you look at the way this is being reported on national American television, almost every one of them brings up a headline about Bill Crystal being called a <laughs> renegade Jew. Yes. To some people, this is an example of anti-Semitism. There are those who are saying that, you know, bring up the title, birth control makes women ugly or something like that. There are feelings that Breitbart, Breitbart, then I want to get to whether this is Bannon or not. Breitbart seems to have been, over the years, a site where things are said 
which are surprising to the liberal mind and the fair-minded American mind. You obviously are a committed Jew. You're an intelligent Jew. Your picture's up on the screen. You look like a lovely person. <laughs> you've got you've to care about these things also. What I want you to do, what I want our audience to do, first of all, is take this issue seriously. And just because there are people who are slamming Bannon and slamming Trump and slamming Breitbart, most of us who hear this, we do not know thing one about any of them. All we're doing is quoting what others are saying. Right. And I want to say one more thing, then I'm going to let you speak. What I've asked my staff to do is find anything that Steve Bannon has done or said of an anti-Semitic nature. Not what people have said about him. I want you to find me a story. I want you to find me a quote. I have a staff that right now is combing the Internet, trying to find for me something that indicates Steve Bannon has articulated anti-Semitism. So far, my staff keeps coming back to me saying they can find nothing of a first-hand nature. The only thing that they do find is, in a divorce proceedings, his ex-wife said he didn't want his children attending school with Jews. That does trouble people. So now, Lori, I want you to, you know, I want you now to respond to the stories that I've quoted from Breitbart, including the Bill Crystal renegade Jew. And what does it mean to you okay. that the new chief strategist of the White House is someone who says, I don't want my children going to school with Jews? Okay, did you, I don't know if you were supplied with the full context there, but it turns out that actually Steve Bannon did send his daughters to the school he was talking, allegedly talking about with that alleged claim by his ex-wife during divorce proceedings. So apparently it wasn't so troublesome to him if he ever made such a statement because he did send his children to that very school, which I believe is called the Archer School. I'm not even sure where that is, but um, that's the full context. If he said that, uh, you know... That's what was claimed in divorce proceedings. Who knows? No one else has ever been able to come up with a single other story. So uh, if he said it, it's not nice, but I don't believe that he said it, and he did send his children there. So if he did say it, he either didn't mean it or it was a really um, lame attack on him by an ex-wife. So, you know, uh, okay, what about the bill? about that. They shouldn't be. Let's get quickly to the renegade Jew yes. issue. Yes, yes. Um, that was a claim made by two people. I actually know both of them, David Horowitz and Bill Crystal. And um, David Horowitz, who is Jewish, made the statement. It was his article, his headline. He put it on there. Um, if you look at, say, for example, the New York Times, Mahmoud Abbas has had op-eds in the New York Times. He has continued with his um, claims of Israel being an occupier and um, doing all kinds of horrible things to Arab Palestinians. We don't thereby conclude that the New York Times is anti-Semitic and Jew-hating or Israel-hating. So I, I think it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> that someone is going to criticize a Jewish man who called another Jewish man a renegade Jew and Jew, and therefore blame a third person who may or may not have had anything, have ever seen the article before it was posted, uh, appear on his site. Okay. Number but three, you said that birth control makes women ugly. I, I have not seen that. I find that offensive, but I find a lot of things offensive that I can look in almost any newspaper or magazine uh, or newscast and say, Geez, that's really offensive. You know, well, it's not nice to make women look like sex objects. It's horrible. Birth control makes women ugly. It's objectively a ridiculous statement. And, no, I don't like that. But it's hard to find, actually, if I had my own magazine, then I would probably have the only magazine that I don't find objectionable yeah. in any way. Uh -huh. All right. So those are the three issues that you raised, okay. uh, I don't sit, think that they give any foundation whatsoever to claiming that Steve Bannon is anti-Semitic. And I, there's the fact that it's such a, a 
thin resume here. What you're claiming, not you, I don't mean you as in you, Mark, what they are claiming uh, and smearing this man with is so thin, it's astounding that it's being repeated and that organizations which are formed and raise money on the claims of defending the Jewish people would attack Bannon now and really use the force of its organization against him, and that's the ADL, it's astounding. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a, an extremely pro-Israel person who's going to have a very strong influence on the next president. That's a person we should be bashing. By the way, no one, is, no one would argue that they would be happy, especially if they're pro-Israel, that they would be happy that a pro-Israel individual had such an important role in an administration. What they're worried about is, even if he is pro-Israel, if he is guilty of racism or misogyny or Islamophobia, and if he in some way, even while he's pro-Israel, has been uh, dismissive of American Jewry, American Jews, as happy as they would be, would still be troubled. You're saying something larger. You're saying that the criticism of Steve Bannon is really unfounded. I'm saying, A, that it's unfounded, and I'm supporting that, and I haven't yet, but allow me to, please. Um, Two people with whom I spoke, one is Joel Pollack, who is an Orthodox Jew, who has worked with Bannon, for Bannon, for years. He said, you know, that if anything, Steve Bannon is overly sensitive to claims made by others, statements made by others that he construes as anti-Semitic. So that actually makes me feel pretty good. Um, And I think that it's important, very important, to separate the wheat from the chaff and say, well, what makes him misogynistic? The fact that there was an article, there was, I don't know what it was, was it an article or an ad or something that said birth control makes women ugly, where he said it? That's a stupid statement. That doesn't mean he's, you know, anti-women. I hate to say how many, in a previous life, I used to uh, do sexual harassment investigations. And the things that people say will blow your mind, even people who are upstanding individuals, is it right? Absolutely not. Is it common? Yes. If we're going to use the standard that no one uh, who isn't completely pure as the driven snow can be an advisor to someone in high office, I think we're going to run out of people very quickly. I understand. But just for the record, there are many Jews who feel the headlines run in the New York Times indicates that the Times does have at least an anti-Israel bias, if not an anti-Semitic bias. But I want to ask you the other question that I hear all the time now. You know, we did the tweet that an actress received, the picture of Auschwitz and whoever did the picture superimposed Trump's name on either side of the gate. And there are people who say the following. Why doesn't Donald Trump now just come out and condemn the anti-Semitism that is suddenly erupting by people who claim they support him. Why doesn't he come out and say once and for all, you know, Alan Dershowitz was on JBS. Well, he said, what I really hope I hear from Trump, and he was very, very balanced. You know, he said, I really hope Trump survives. Trump is everybody's president. This is Alan Dershowitz. He also said, I really hope that Donald Trump comes out and says to all the white supremacists, to all those who are now, you know, it's not that he didn't, he, that he ever sought David Duke or the KKK, but he hasn't come out and said unequivocally, you are not America. I don't want your vote. And if I ever run again, I don't want you to vote for me. One of the questions is, why doesn't somebody like Bannon put his arm around Donald Trump and say, look, you can make an enormous impact right now if you publicly state, not only are you not, not only do you not support any expression of anti-Semitism, you find it hideous and repugnant, but you also reject any bigotry or uh, anti-black sentiment or any formal 
Islamophobia. But right now, we're really talking about the, the white supremacists. They're the ones who are being touted all the time as they're the ones who support Trump, as if, therefore, Trump is a white supremacist. Why doesn't Bannon or why doesn't Priebus or why don't you say to Donald Trump, get out in front of this? If you want to make it clear to the Jewish community and the American community that this isn't who you are, you can do so in a moment. Why doesn't that happen? Because I'll, I'll tell you why it hasn't happened. And this is just me thinking. I, I, haven't, I certainly haven't discussed it with Donald Trump. I haven't discussed anything with him. I understand. And, um, but doing something like that is starting off on an apology, and I think that is the wrong way to start. You know, Barack Obama began his presidency making what people refer to as the American Apology Tour, and he ran around the world apologizing for various things that people found. Uh, I'm sorry, by the way, I, 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 I want to interrupt you. Nothing you've said so far do I feel does not have real power to suggest that saying to America, I Let reject, reject anti-Semitism. Why because is that? Why do you use the word apology there? Who's he apologizing because for? He, to? Well, it's assuming that he has some responsibility for this. I don't recall people asking President Obama to apologize for various of his aides who constantly, in fact, always equate Palestinian terrorism with responses by Israel to defend itself. If it infuriates I the me. Press it infuriates every me. Every day in the State Department, and it happens at least three times a week. So, you know, I don't think it's a fair thing, but here's what I think he should do. And I think this will, I hope, send the message that's needed, because I don't disagree that a message needs to be sent. Here's what he needs to do. What Donald Trump needs to do, and what Steve Bannon has to help him do, is to appoint people who immediately take action that undermine or undercut any of these arguments that are being laid now. I don't know whether you or your listeners have seen the pledge issued by Donald Trump's two Israel advisors. It is absolutely astounding, essential reading for anyone who cares about the Jewish state. It's not on point. Lori, stay on Lori, stay on point. Any of this anti Semitism criticism, I would think, that he needs to appoint and have in place people who take action in ways that ensure the safety of everyone. What I'm wondering is why are the people who are calling for Donald Trump at this moment to apologize for things that people are claiming he has said and done, which I don't believe he said and done, why aren't people saying, excuse me, President Obama, why aren't you trying to heal our nation? Why aren't you telling the people who are out there in Washington, D.C., with rape Melania signs and with start the revolution and he's not our president and vandalizing uh, stores and, and businesses owned by Americans, why isn't there a call for that? Now, that would be real healing. That's essential. But because it's being done, directed at his, President Obama's, you know, successor. And I think that's essential. But what the president, the new incoming president, has to do is to take actions that put people's minds to rest. Words mean very little. It's easy to say, oh, I'm going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Every single president has promised that and not a one has done it. But let's see some real action. Let's see support for all of those people who are now claiming that they've been disenfranchised. Let's make sure that people come together in a healing way and have programs and activities, but mostly programs that can enable everyone to feel better and feel good about being American. I think that's what's needed. Okay, as I said, I thought you made many good points. And I want to go on record. I am disappointed when a Barack Obama or a Hillary Clinton do not come out and say to Black Lives Matter, who now have on their website a virulent BDS message, anti-Israel message. It offends me as an American and as a Jew that Barack Obama has not spoken out, 
against Black Lives Matter, that Hillary Clinton throughout her campaign catered to Black Lives Matter. I do not think it's appropriate. It has nothing to do with what I voted for, who I voted for. I believe it in the same vein. When you say words don't matter, Lori, there were many things Democrats just didn't get, didn't understand in this election, and they lost it as a result of it. Right now, in my humble way, I am saying to you and everybody in the Trump administration, you are making an enormous mistake if you think words wouldn't heal at the moment. Right now, were Donald Trump to say, I'm not apologizing for anything, I had nothing to do with it, but I do want those who are promoting anti-Semitism, who are promoting uh, any kind of racism, that they do not speak for me, they are not real Americans, and that real Americans do not put out tweets with uh, Auschwitz and my name on it. And if Trump were to say that, a whole, they, a whole argument against him would be undercut and removed. And I'm disappointed. I was disappointed in Barack Obama. I will be disappointed if Donald Trump does not use this, if Steve Bannon doesn't say to Trump, just, just go out and say this doesn't represent you and you're disappointed. By the way, Trump should be offended. And, it's not, and all he has to do is say so. I wish Barack Obama had said it. And I wish so, Trump had said it, let would say it. Let me just say a few things. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I don't know that Steve Bannon is the person who would do this. I do know that I saw Kellyanne Conway numerous times tweet and also uh, state in response to interviews when there were um, people saying horrible things at a Trump rally or pretending or claiming to be Trump supporters. She said, that person does not represent us. That person has no space in our campaign or our organization, period. And I also know that Donald Trump did unequivocally uh, condemn David Duke and refuse his uh, support. So I don't know. That's my problem, is I don't know if the campaign or if Donald Trump says these things, whether it's able to drown out the waves of venom that's now spewing over this nation. Um, you know, it, we do, we both agree, it's an ugly time in America right now, and we need cool heads to prevail. Um, so I hope, at least by actions that he takes, Donald Trump is able to allay the fears, certainly of anyone who thinks he is appointed an anti-Semite in Steve Bannon, or someone who, but, and by the way, Reports in Breitbart, there are long discussions in Breitbart, a, a huge article discussing what the alt-right is, and not supporting it, but just analyzing it and, and trying to explain it to people. And the person who wrote it is a gay man. He's, you know, he's employed by Breitbart. How can you say he's homophobic? I think the guy's kind of bizarre. Lori, we are grabbed by the clock. Okay. I am so appreciative of your willingness to come on, and you are very articulate and thoughtful, and you're lovely. Anyway, I hope one day, Laura, you might come to Fort Lee, and maybe you'll sit with somebody who disagrees with you, and the two of you will square off here on JBS. But I thank you. I wish you all the best, and I hope we get to speak again very soon. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You be well. There you have it. Lori Lowenthal Marcus, co-chair of Jews Choose Trump. Dot org, a volatile issue in the American Jewish community. And like everything else, it's not simple and it's not black and white. I resent those who want to make this into a black and white issue.